Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Tech Tip Tuesday. Our topic for today is going to be the Knowledge Sync webcast setup. Now, if you've already got Knowledge Sync, you may have already read or heard about the webcast. Uh, you may have heard of it referred to as a dashboard. Um, and it is a function that comes out of the box with Knowledge Sync. Um, but it isn't configured out of the box necessarily. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is how to get that set up for your use. Now, just to go in a little bit more depth about what the webcast is, again, it's interchangeably referred to as either a dashboard or a webcast. Sometimes you'll see that letter C capitalized in it. But what it breaks down to is a Knowledge Sync webcast is a dynamic HTML document that posts results of a query into a browser friendly web page. So, instead of sending out a report or a file or just an email, to somebody, this has a dynamic feeling to it, a, a web page that can be refreshed and browsed to as needed. Um, it can be configured to show the results for a team or business overall. Uh, and when when you do that type of a thing where you're showing all the rels results, it's called a static webcast. Or there's also a dynamic webcast or dashboard, which is when you break down the results by a particular um, field in the query, like by sales rep, by state, by part number, etc. Um, and overall, again, this just gives people a place that they can mark as a browser favorite and go back and take a look at it as they need to, rather than waiting to receive something by email or, um, again, as soon as something is sent out, it's old news. And so this is something that gets updated based on your schedule for the event and uh, they can dynamically go out and check that as they need. Now, the rub with this webcaster configuration is that if you were installed before March, mid-March of 2017, the webcaster was probably not set up for you. By default, it wasn't until very recently. And so the main goal of today's session is to go over how to turn that on so that you can start using it if you like to. Now we're not going to break down going into a query and setting it up for use with a webcast. I will show you a couple of examples of what a webcast can do for you. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, there is actually a webcast event included in the Job Boss Core event pack that you would have received with your installation. And once you get this configuration set up, you can start using that webcast event if you like. Now, one final thing that we need to do before you go in and set this up, there is a prerequisite here, and you are going to need to browse into the Job Boss Knowledge Base and find document number 27.615.629. That is going to include a file that you will need uh, in the setup of your um, of your webcaster on your on your side, and that will uh, that should be all that you need to get this moving forward for you. Now, before we get into the technical part of setting up that Knowledge Sync webcaster, I do just want to show you real quick what this can do for you here as a tool. And so I've got a few pages that I've already pre-created in my Knowledge Sync webcaster that I'm just going to show you here. I have basically two different um, webcast job uh, events. One shows the overall activity of new jobs created by sales rep by day. Um, and then I also have it broken down by sales rep instead of showing the whole group overall. So this first one we're looking at here, this is created by the Knowledge Sync web service. It's very simple, um, what I have it doing, but you can make this as complex as you'd like. And so you can see I've got uh, multiple sales reps and different jobs that were created in a day. You can also see if I come into these additional tabs here, Richard Halverson has his own page here. And on this tab here, we have Thomas Henderson with his own page here. So um, those are, um, and so in, in notice again in my title, I've got all, and over here I've got by rep. So, um, so that's the kind of thing that a Knowledge Sync um, webcast can do for you, giving you those dynamic pages that you can bookmark and again refresh as needed, and the event will handle how often that data is updated. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the actual setup of the webcaster. So, the first thing that you need to do is, um, you, if you've downloaded that file already, 
you want to go ahead and take a look at it, unzip it here, and what we've got, there is one particular file that we need, and it is called dashboard underscore template dot htm. What you need to do is you need to move that into whatever folder your default dashboard folder is going to reside in. Now my recommendation for that is under the Knowledge Sync install folder on your server, there is already a webcaster folder that exists. My recommendation is to copy that dashboard underscore template dot htm into that webcaster folder and make this your typical location, default location for that webcaster um, information. So copy that htm file into that folder and then we are done with that zip file for now. Now other things in that zip file that are of note, um, there is a readme.txt, there's a PowerPoint presentation that goes through some of the information and Word document, uh, both on creating information about uh, webcasting and also on the webcast, uh, sorry, the Knowledge Sync manual. Page 222 is where you'll find great detail starting about working with the webcaster. All right, so we're going to go into the administrator for Knowledge Sync. Now, if you remember, the administrator is where you go in and do your software setup and set up your sending mechanisms for, for the different events. And so if we come in here under administration folders, go under activity and take a look at server status, we can see that there is a webcaster server. Now, by default, this is going to be shut down or idle or it's not going to be processing. But if you double click on it and check this box, it says allow server to process, save and close. Now it is going to be ready to run that webcasting updating. And all you have to do is come into services on your computer and find that exact job boss knowledge sync event manager, restart that service and the event manager uh, webcaster should be ready to go. So let's close administrator, go back in, take a look here. And now if we take a look at server status, we see that the webcaster server is idle, which means that it is ready to work for you. The next thing that we need to do is come under software setup and actually define our webcaster default folder. And so you can see there's an area under software setup called webcast locations. Now, you, regardless of how many webcast locations you set up, and you can set up as many as you want, maybe you set them up by department, maybe you set them up by state, maybe you set them up by function, like one area is your webcasts for quoting, one area is your webcasts for active jobs, etc. cetera, um, but you do have to set one up for your default. And so to do, to create a new webcasting location, once you've clicked on webcast locations here, down in the, in the tree, up in the upper left, click on new webcasting location, and that's gonna open up this window. Now, I've populated mine already, but this is the window that you're gonna see. That first one that you create, it has to have a description of default in all caps. So that's the first thing. Now, the HTML template is going to be the template that's used for the setup and layout of that um, of pages that are listed in that webcast location. And this is going to be that dashboard underscore template that I had you move into that webcaster folder. And so you can browse to find that file um, out of that folder. And then finally, the publishing location is going to be the folder itself that it goes into. And so again, I recommend for the default, at least using that webcaster folder. Now, you also wanna make sure that active is checked so that this location is an active place to save. And you want to go ahead and check the box that says dynamically create disk folders as needed. What this last checkbox does is very important. Uh, let's say that you're running your thing by sales rep and you add a new sales rep to the team. And so all of a sudden the next day there's results for that sales rep that weren't there before. By checking this box, Knowledge Sync is able to create that folder for the new sales rep automatically. You don't have to do anything manually. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. And just to show you again how that looks, if I come into my webcaster folder here, you can see um, with those with that event that I showed you earlier that has my different sales results, I have my general folder and this is where it's showing my new jobs for everybody. 
but it also has those folders and Knowledge Sync created these folders for me by sales rep so that each sales rep has its own page. And again, now if you send somebody a link to that, uh, to that location, they can have this page, they can pull it up and refresh it. And then in the event itself is where you would define how often the uh, query goes out and looks for new data and publishes that out to the webcast. If you have any problems getting the webcaster to work, you can contact knowledge or sorry, you can contact job boss support and they will assist you with getting the service running. If you have any questions about how to uh, navigate through the setting up of a webcast or if you want a webcast set up to your specifications, uh, job boss professional services is there to help you with that stuff. Um, we can either do um, do the creation together so that you learn from it, or you can just provide us the specs and we can create the webcast and, and then get onto your server and set it up for the output. Thank you for checking us out today on Tech Tip Tuesday. And if you have any questions, we are here to help. Thank you much.